Why should you use Tmux? I see a lot of people in my comments talking about they don't want like another nesting thing and like their terminal emulator already handles all of that. And it's like kind of complicated and old and clunky. I'm like, I totally get that because for the longest time I didn't want to use Tmux either. And I finally tried it because of the Primogen's workflow. And that workflow is great, but Tmux is just so much better than that. Let me put you onto something, right? So if you're just going to stay on your computer, and you know that for a fact, like your whole career, maybe you don't want to go into computer science, maybe you're in linguistics or whatever, and you have your setup and your terminal emulator like can do tabs and whatever, that's great. That's a, that's a perfectly valid workflow. But if you're ever going into CS and you're going to work at a company, chances are you're going to be using someone else's computer, using another terminal, using something on a server. So I recently started this internship at a company called Direct Supply. And turns out they use Windows and it's mandatory because like their credentials are just rooted in. So I had to just use this Windows computer. And it, that was like... When I heard that, a chill went down my spine. It was like I heard a family member died in a car accident. But when I booted into, well, I installed WSL very quickly, obviously. And I opened up the terminal. Typing Tmux and seeing that green bar come up is like, it's like you're in an alien civilization. You've been abducted, but you meet your friend Steve there. And Steve is like, oh yeah, they installed me on version three and I've been here all along. And just having those keybinds all be the same thing, no configuration, being able to kind of get like 60% of your workflow back just immediately because of Tmux is just like the most heavenly feeling in the world. So let me just jump into the basics. All Tmux does pretty much is it lets you open up new tabs and windows, stuff like that, control terminal pane. So you open it up, you can see at the top here, we've got a tab that's the process name. If I were to jump into Vim, it'll change to NeoVim. To create a new one, you can do leader, which by default is control B. A lot of people, including myself, remap it to control space because it's a little easier, but honestly, that was a long time ago. And now like, I feel like control B to me is pretty much as easy to type as control space. So keeping it at the default is not always a terrible idea. So leader C will create a new tab. You can see it opened up next there. And then leader N and leader P will switch back and forth between these. Alternatively, you can use numbers to switch between them. So that just immediately gives you multiple terminals, which is so useful when you're on Windows or something and it's like completely different commands to create new terminal tabs and new windows. So you just have this standardized. Even more useful if you're in like a session on a server and you wanna create multiple tabs. Some people in my comments have said like, learn native job handling and that, yes, that's a great thing to learn. Like being able to suspend and resume and kill jobs and just like in general spawn multiple sub processes of a shell. That's a great skill to have. The reason I prefer Tmux over that is Tmux has like pre-configured keybinds. So it's just more ergonomic to do a lot of the common things, but you absolutely can be a workflow beast of those native things. And they're great to know for shell scripting. So yeah, don't sleep on native job handling at all. So then the next great part of Tmux is you can also split like that with um, percent sign. And I believe the other one is quotes. Yeah. But I honestly, I don't really do that. I don't split that often. It's just not all that useful. And you can kill things with leader X and then like kill a tab with leader X. So that's all well and good. But another great part of it is you can, if you lose server connection or you want to quit out, you can come back to this later. So just to prove like there's some text in there and maybe there's a running process in here. Now, if I quit out of this, which I can do with leader D for detach, I can just type Tmux and then attach when I open up a new session and it preserves everything. So that's, that's very useful in a context where you don't have your own configuration, like you're on a server, the, the connection quits, whatever, or you're just in some different environment. One thing you can combine with Tmux that makes it so much more powerful is if I type leader F, I have a little script. This is from the Primogen that lets you search through certain directories and then create a new session in that directory. And a session is basically just like a 
a directory. It's something based off a directory, right? It's like when you start Vim, right? It's in a directory, and then you can like edit files and create new things. It's basically like a Vim instance, so I can create new tabs here. But if I were to go to my config, for instance, if I search up config, and then I create another tab, you can see that'll also be in config. So basically, like per project I have, I have different sessions for each of those projects and then I can switch between them. And this is useful, say if you've got Vim and like, you know, a dev server running in each of them and then you wanna switch back and forth between multiple projects with a bunch of things running. And this is such a useful workflow. I talked about it in a video where I was roasting Zoxide, but it's not just that, it's not preserving the projects. It's like how this workflow is so good and powerful and it's like so portable too. It's basically pre-installed on everything. And this little script to like switch between things with FZF, that is just called Tmux Sessionizer. You can get it from my config or the Primagems. A couple things to note about it is putting in directories here. This is like a per on a per computer basis. So you can see it'll search my projects, my notes, my documents, textbooks, whatever. If you were to set this up on a new computer, none of those would be there, obviously. So I don't really have a very portable version of this. When I clone my config on a different computer, I'll just change these. Like usually I'll keep documents projects and I'll just create that and these other things won't really matter. So it, you don't have to add a ton of things manually, just add like one directory and then the finder will be able to go through them. And then it uses this program called SK, which is a Rust alternative to FZF, which is a Go program. And basically all that is is like a little picker menu. So you can easily swap that out. Whatever is more portable to install. As soon as I got on this Windows computer, I tried to install SK, or it, the full name is Skim, and it didn't work, so I just installed FZF. Everything worked perfectly. And yeah, all it does is take that, creates a new Tmux session if it doesn't exist, and if it does, it switches to it. So yeah, that's that's the huge advantage of Tmux. Some people will, will say, no thanks, my terminal environment is perfectly good, and they've got their like command N, Z to the project, and they have like 10, 10 different windows open. Maybe they're doing a little bit of job handling. That's perfectly fine if you're just like a Unix enthusiast, but you're most likely gonna get wrecked if you go into the professional world of software development. And they're totally like, it's not that big of a deal. This is a minor like ergonomic improvement. Don't freak out over it. But yeah, that's my my advice is Tmux is underrated. It's actually really easy. The keybinds are pretty simple. They're pretty Vim-like. I would learn it and you'll be kind of amazed at how often you end up using it and how useful the features are. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one.